You have to receive the purpose of why your man of God was placed in your life. There's a reason for it. There's a reason for it. So when we look at the text talking about in Proverbs 27, verse 18, it says that. So he that waits upon his master will be honored. Honored means that he will be celebrated and receive investment, provision, favor, deliverance, assistance, help, blessing. He will be promoted. His anointing will switch. He will have favor. See, when the word of God talks about he that waits upon his master. The disciples used to call Jesus master. They call Jesus master as a term of ruler. I give myself over to you for you to influence and control me and guide me. So is is a is a term that represents a prophet over you. Master, someone having authority to give you instruction. The Bible says he that waited upon his master. He will be honored, which means that he will receive harvests which means that he will receive rewards, which means that he will receive blessing. Makai, you can go to sleep. <laughs> Makai, go to sleep and, and just watch the replay when you get up because Makai been working for me all day today. So go, go to sleep and catch the replay, finish, finish sleep and go to sleep. Um, so understanding the honor part of waiting on your master, many people are not receiving the purpose of why their man of God has come into their life. They're not receiving the effects of it. They don't have no fruit of why their man of God came into their life because they have not waited on their master. They're driven by self and feelings and emotions. So they're not waiting on their master to even be honored. They're not waiting on their master to see the effects and the rewards and the advantages that are given to them as a result of respecting and waiting for their master. There is something that happens when you are waiting on your man of God. You start to recognize how many things you had attached to you that should have been gone when the man of God connected with you. Because the minute that you're told to wait on your man of God, all type of systems start popping up. No, I, I, I could do this. No, I could do this. No, I could do that. No, I, I, I need to do this. No, I need to hear a word. No, I need to do. But waiting on your master means that if you don't see your master, you don't hear no word. You wait until they speak. That's when you hear the word. That's what waiting on your master means. That whenever they are absent, you wait for what you think you need until they show up. Not you go search it and find it through another means. But that's what our generation operate by. We don't have people receiving the prophet's reward because the prophet's reward is to wait on that prophet. Wait on them. But see, the prophet ends up waiting on you. The prophet is waiting on you to surrender, waiting on you to submit, 
waiting on you to die to yourself. And the prophet waits for years and years and years and years. But see, the word of God say that he that waits upon that prophet shall be honored. But because the flesh is in control, the prophet ends up waiting on you years. And so the whole purpose of why the prophet comes into your life, it doesn't happen. When your prophet comes into your life, what is the major purpose to bring your soul into prosperity? Which means that your soul will succeed over evil and will succeed with doing the will of the spirit. That's what bringing the soul into prosperity means. That the soul will achieve what the spirit of God wants daily. But that doesn't happen. If you be honest, what starts to take place? The soul begins to deteriorate because it doesn't submit. So then you start searching every which way to try to find something that's a quick fix. Have you ever had something broken in your vehicle and you didn't have the full amount of money to fix it? You notice the mechanic will try to offer you something temporal. It's not solving the issue, but you're making an investment hope, hoping that the temporary fix will sustain you until you're able to fix the totality of things. Imagine, there are things that when a prophet enters into your life, they are there to fix the situation. You don't take the fixing from the prophet you left to find all these deceptive quick fixes according to you. In your mind, you think it's, okay, it's sustaining me, it's sustaining me. But at the end of the day, you end up with the problem still there. When Moses came into Miriam's life, he came into her life to deliver her completely. She does not receive Moses. She tells Aaron, God speaks to us too. He doesn't just speak to Moses. He talks to us too. He gives us information too. He, Moses is not our way only to hear from God. God talks with us too. She chose to reject Moses as her solution. And at the end of the day, she ended up with the problem still in her heart of pride, lust, wickedness, deception. Nothing changed. You know why? Because she rejected the solution. She rejected the prophet. And now Satan is prospering in keeping Miriam with the same demons that she had when Moses entered her life. See? The story of Elisha and Gehazi. Gehazi keeps the demons that he had when Elisha came into his life because he's a liar. He's a trickster. The Bible says, and he's deceitful. The Bible says that Elisha told Naaman, I won't take nothing from you. The clothes that you offer me, the money that you offer me, I won't take nothing. And the words say that Gehazi went behind and told Naaman, my master told me to come get those garments and that money that you was about to get. He told me to get it because we got some prophets, young prophets that need some outfits. And he, he sent me to come get it from you. Whoa. This in the Bible. And the Bible said when, he, when Gehazi came back, he, Gehazi walked through the door and Elisha said, where were you? The word of God said, Gehazi told Elisha, I ain't go nowhere. I ain't do nothing. He's lying to his man of God now. This is what he has become. Because when Elisha came into his life, Elisha came to set him free from these demons. He, he does not receive that. And now he's in a position 
where he's lying, he's tricking, he's deceitful. And look what happens next. The Bible says that Elisha prophesied to him, told him, all right, this is your consequence. He ends up with leprosy for the rest of his life until he dies. He never got healed from it. Let me ask you a question. What happened? Was the leprosy on the schedule of God? No. Was he supposed to live forever with leprosy? No. But he had a choice. Let my prophet bring me out. Let my prophet preserve me. Receive the prophet's reward. Or I stay with my demons. I keep my same personality. I keep my same schedule. I keep my same decision making and consequence. This is what the enemy loves more than anything to see somebody choose to reject the prophet that's sent to them because then everything that the devil wills to happen to you will happen to you gradually. You didn't hear me. So when you, when, you, when, when you don't receive your prophet, you may not be in fornication, but the day comes and you're fornicating. Wow. You don't receive your prophet. You may not be smoking. The day comes, now you're smoking. I said gradually. Satan not stupid. Satan knows that if Satan just throws it at you, he'll be like, oh, this is the devil. Oh, oh. no, Satan waits. You don't got no power because you're disconnected from the power circuit. So what is going to keep you from not doing it? Just think about it. Okay, a lot of times people say, I'm not going to fornicate. I'm not going to smoke. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. Okay, but how would you not do that? Because satanic power is superior to the human will without the Holy Ghost. Did you know that? Satanic power is superior to the human will without the Holy Ghost. That's why Acts chapter 1 verse 8 and all. Ye shall be my witnesses. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive power and be my witnesses. See, they are witnessing on the behalf of the God kind of life, the spirit of the Lord, and what he could do to keep you, sustain you. They're witnessing that to people, showing them how to behave, how to live, how to conduct themselves. But they're doing this after that, that the Holy Ghost has come upon them. See? They have superiority over Satan. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give you power. Luke 10, 19. To trample over the serpent and the scorpion and all the powers of the enemy. These are different brackets of darkness. Darkness. These are different brackets of darkness. When we, when we talk about Luke chapter 10, verse 19, it's talking about the serpent. This is one bracket of darkness. You notice the serpent as a, a, at the top. Why is the serpent at the top? Because it was the serpent that deceived Eve. So the serpent is a realm where Satan is able to get into the psych psychological state of a person and convince them that what God said was incorrect and flawed. And now this is the real truth of the matter. The serpent is what happens when a person has a prophet in their life and the prophet comes into your life and you still with every man of God, every woman of God, every convention, every, every teacher, every, everything that's going on, you all over the place because the serpent has deceived you. And when the serpent is ready, you're going to end up in fornication. You're going to end up smoking again because there's no power. The power comes through submission. You su what did Bible say? You submit yourself unto God. You resist the devil. You can't resist the devil without submission. And you can't say, I'm in submission to God in a world of my own. No, because remember, submission means to come underneath a mission. 
The prophet comes into your life with a mission. The word of God says without a vision, the people perish. Numbers chapter 12, verse six and on says that if there be a prophet, I make myself known to him in a vision. God told the prophet, what that jaw, write the vision. No, was that Habakkuk? Write the vision and make it plain. Write the vision. Habakkuk 2.2, 2. write the vision and make it plain. He told the prophet to write the vision. Vision come through the prophet of God. When God said in the word, without a vision, the people perish, it means literally, without a prophet, the people perish. Then we go back to Hosea 12.13 all over again. By a prophet was Israel brought out. By a prophet was Israel brought out means by a prophet Israel did not perish. Wow. That's what that means. By a prophet Israel did not perish. By a prophet Israel did not perish. By a prophet Israel did not perish. So without a vision the people perish. Without a prophet the people perish. Because if there be a prophet, I make myself known to him in a vision. I speak it to him in a dream. A prophet is a visionary, which a vision is a mission. So when the prophet comes into your life, this is where submission to God officially starts. You can't say that you submitted to God because, oh, I read the Bible. I'm fasting. I'm listening to gospel music. I'm talking in tongues. You can't submit to God without a physical person on earth that's giving you the word of the Lord. That's sent by God. And so people are not receiving the prophet in the name of a prophet. They're not receiving the prophet's reward for their life. So if you look at them years later, they're still hooked to addictions. They're hooked to demonic things that were supposed to have been ejected a long time ago. You were supposed to be further along in your dominion. Further along. In your boldness. When temptation and trials come. Supposed to be further along. That's why the Bible say the traditions of men make the word of God none effect. Because God saying, once the prophet come, you're going to prosper. The prophet comes into your life. You don't prosper. You're making the word of God none effect because you have traditions, which is demons that are telling you the way to do godliness. Meanwhile, it gives a bad report of who God is because people look and say, you have a prophet, but you have depression. You have a prophet, but then you have prophets. You have a prophet, but then you go to church. Can somebody tell me which church that Elijah should go to? Can somebody tell me? Can you tell me which church did Elijah should go to? Can you tell me which church did Joshua go to? If we want to deal with biblical truth, we can't find it. Isn't that ironic? You can't find which church did Gehazi go to when he was serving Elijah. Which church? What was the name of his church? What was the name of his pastor? Our people are so lost. Our people are so lost. They'll tell you, I got my prophet and I got my pastor. Huh? Huh? 
A pastor is a shepherd over sheep. Matthew, John 10 said, verse 27 on, my sheep hear my voice. So you telling me that you have a shepherd that is giving you God's voice and then you have a prophet. Huh? See, it's, it's, it's so confusing. I don't even understand it. I, I couldn't even teach it with the, with the marvelous thing. The Bible said that certain times where people, when stupid people would come, it said that he... It took Jesus a while to understand them. It said when he had understood what they were saying. That means that Jesus, he was dumbfounded by what he found, which was dumb. It was a kingdom. So it took Jesus a while to even connect with what they were saying because it, it wasn't nothing that he prescribed. There's people right now that believe that. I have my prophet. I have my pastor. God sent Jeremiah to prophesy against the pastors of that day. Because Jeremiah was their pastor. The word of the Lord is what births a shepherd. You can't protect sheep by common sense. Hey, don't go there. Hey, don't go there. I don't think that you should do that. I don't think. I don't think. No, no, no. You protect sheep by the voice of God. And the prophet is what? The voice of God. Over the years in my life in ministry, Holy Spirit sent me to people. They don't listen to me. Then they start having attacks in their dreams. My mantle can only protect people that submit to me. That's why I come to you. The Lord already know you don't have authority in your sleep. He pitch you underneath somebody that can protect you. You get out and need the protection. Then you cry when you get attacked. That's an oxymoron. God sent me to me to people in ministry. They leave underneath the covering. They start fornicating with people. Sleeping with random people. Exchanging bodily fluid. Ill. With people they don't even know. Why do that happen? God knew that fornication is in your future. He pitched you underneath the prophet. So that you can have the foresight. So that you can avoid it. The prophet tell you about it. You leave the prophet covering. You engage it. Satan is defeating man because man have the pride of Satan within them. And Satan, which was Lucifer, broke Lucifer's submission. That was Lucifer's major thing. I know that I'm supposed to worship God, but I ain't going to do it no more. I'm going to find another way. I know that this is the way for me. Uh, it's been revealed to me. I've been blessed. I've been created. I've been birthed by Jehovah God, but I'm going to turn my back on Jehovah God. Hereby, Satan been infecting the body. All these ages, people don't want to submit to their prophet of God. And they don't submit. And Satan keeps on having them fall short of the glory over and over and over and over again. And they suffer things that was never supposed to be suffered. Who gets the victory when that happens? 
God don't want to keep on restoring you. Don't get it twisted. God does not want to keep on restoring you. God wants to use you to restore somebody else. Why are you living a selfish life? Your life is all about you falling and you making mistakes. And Lord, forgive me. And Lord, make me well. Make me whole. Lord, help me. When are you going to grow up? Where God could use you to bring somebody out of the hands of the enemy. Why? With all the power available to you to walk, you'll choose to be a cripple. To see, you'll choose to be a blind. To hear, you'll choose to be deaf. All the power made available to you through the cross of Christ. And your prayer is always, Lord, forgive me. That's all you pray about. Your prayer point is for forgiveness. You don't want to walk with God in the cool of the day. When first John chapter two. It said that if you say that you are in him. You ought to walk as he walked. Walk as he walked. You don't want that. Elijah was praying earnestly. Not for the Lord to forgive him of sins. He was praying earnestly. For what? He was praying earnestly for the heavens to obey his command. Wait a minute. Our generation is praying earnestly for God to forgive them of sins. This prophet is in the Old Testament praying earnestly for the supernatural to take place in his region. The difference in prayer. Oh, this is so big. This is so big. When Dr. Mike Murdoch came into my life, I wasn't going to be no fool. I wasn't going to be no donkey. I wasn't going to be going around years later attempting to discover what is it that the father has for me. No, the father just showed me what he has for me. I saw Dr. Mike Murdoch in a vision when I was at Home Depot sleeping inside of a vehicle while the Lord telling me, this is who I'm connected. He showed me Dr. Mike Murdoch. I didn't get what Dr. Mike Murdoch talking about. Oh, let me go watch on YouTube. Let me go find out how to find out about the Feast of the Tabernacles. Let me find out about warfare. Let me go find out about the New Blood Covenant. Let me go find out about Old Communion. Oh, let me go find out. No! My job is to find out what Dr. Mike Murdoch needs from me. I know the will of God. What's happening to man is that God shows you what he wants from you. And then you don't want it. So you keep on searching. Then talking about, oh Lord, I'm waiting for you to reveal your will to me. Oh Lord, show me what to do next. Bible saying in the book of James, don't be a hearer of the word and not a doer, deceiving yourself. That's what James chapter one say. You could be a hearer of the word and not a doer, deceiving yourself. And people are deceiving themselves. What else do you want? You say that you want the spirit of God. You want the will of God for your life. That's what you say. God comes to you as a prophet. 
He talks to you. He gives you wisdom. You stray like a dog. What do you want? You're going to have to be honest with yourself at one point and just say, I want the devil. That's what I want. Because if you want religion, you want the devil. If you want tradition of men, you want the devil. If you want the will of God, you'll want the prophet of God. At one point, you're going to have to start being honest with yourself. I don't want the Lord. Let me stop telling myself that. Oh, I love the Lord. Oh, I love Jesus. Oh, I love. No. You... Matthew 15, verse 8 and on. These people, they draw nigh to me with their lips, with their mouth. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Isaiah chapter 1 was talking about people that was holding fasts and feasts in all these religious synagogues. And God was saying, you won't do what I say. You won't obey my voice. I don't want these things. Don't offer them up to me. Give me what I'm asking for. That's why Isaiah 119 ended off saying, if you be willing and obedient. You'll eat the good of the land because these people was doing all type of sacrifice, but they wasn't willing, nor was they obedient. And they wasn't eating the good of the land. And what happened when people don't eat the good of the land? They start praying for healing in their body. Lord, heal me. I'm sick. They start praying for deliverance in their situation. Lord, get me out of this situation. They doing all this stuff and all that could be fixed. If you be willing. And if you be obedient. Honor is a dying art. You listen to people. They don't even know what love means. They don't know what honor means. They, are, they don't know what respect means. Because people do not know God. And if you live long enough. You'll start to recognize. This person does not know the Holy Ghost. Why can't they see? Why can't they hear? Why can't they perceive? Remember Isaiah even prophesied the people is going to come. Seeing they won't understand. Hearing they won't perceive. They're going to be blind. They're going to be dull. Heavy ears. Because the word of the Lord is not their realm. The word of the serpent is their realm. People do not know the Lord. There are reels that show up on my page sometimes. All I see is people dancing around all the time. That's what the highlight is. Dancing. That's the highlight now. Wow. Flesh. Everybody fleshly. Yeah, it's fleshly. It's just fleshly. Everything is just flesh. If somebody want to pray, they got to do it publicly. People don't want to pray in private. Because it doesn't bring no glory to them. Nobody is saying I'm powerful if I do this in secret. When the word of God say, when you pray, go in the closet. Don't let no man hear you. You, you pray in secret. Your father in heaven will reward you openly. But people are saying, no, no, no. I need to be pray openly. Because praying in secret, that kills me. I don't feel like I'm being worshipped. I don't feel like nobody is recognizing me as powerful. I need everybody to see me and look at me and say, wow, wow, wow. That's what I need. I need somebody to uh, 
boost me up. I, I need somebody. So if somebody about to go fast, they don't fast no more in secret. Fasting is no longer a secret thing. Oh, this is day one of my consecration. This is day three, day four. The scriptural focus is this. Day five, the scriptural focus is this. Day seven, the scriptural focus is this. We are on day 15. We are focusing on this. That's how man fasts in our generation. They don't fast in secret no more. When the Bible said, go anoint your face. The Pharisees, the Bible said, like to disfigure their face because they want to look like they're fasting. They want to look sad and sorrowful. The Lord taught, when you go fast, go anoint your face. That means put your makeup on. That means go wash your face. Smell good. Put on nice clothes. Put on nice outfit. Look nice. Look good when you go in front of people. Don't let them know that you fasted. I'm telling you. The Ichabod realm is on so many believers. Yes, they believe that Jesus died and rose again, but the glory has departed. Yes, they believe that there, 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 there was a resurrection after three days. But the glory has departed. Because man don't want to lay down their own perception and opinion. They don't want to lay it down. They are more godly than God. They are more holy art thou. The meaning they have their own righteousness. They have made up in their minds what it is I'm going to do to inherit eternal life, which is the same thing as the other religions. That's the same thing they do it. There's other ways to get to heaven. That's the same thing they do it. John 14, 6, chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way, I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh to the Father except through me, except by me. But when you're in the flesh, there's other ways to get to heaven. And don't say it's Jesus because Jesus going to come to you in this life. John chapter 14, verse 21. He that keepeth my commandments, he it is that loveth me. And he will be loved of my father and I will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him. Lord going to manifest himself to you. He going to come to you in this life. You hear me? He going to come to you in this life and he going to show you the way. He going to show you the way. He going to show you this is me. This is the way that I am revealing to you. He said, come learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Come learn of me. Take my yoke upon you. He going to give you the yoke while you're in your body. He going to give you the yoke while you're in your body. And he not going to be coming on the white cloud. To, Ooh, my thine name is Jesus. My thine name is thou son of God. I've come to you on the clouds to come talk to you and let you know what I have for thy life. He going to come to you in the same form that you're in, which is a physical body. And he going to prophesy to you and talk with you. And he going to sit amongst you and how you treat him. He, he already know. By your deeds, the Bible said, every man shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account of the deeds done where? In heaven? The deeds done where? In a vision? No, the deeds done in his body. He going to give an account of the deeds done in his body because Christ was in a body too. Looking at you. Wow. Shabbat. Lekeleon. Christ was in a body too, looking at your moves, listening to your words. In the same earth realm. Mm. 
Man, missing the mark and it's so easy. When you have a prophet of God, you have no excuse to ever be confused and miss the will of God for your life. It's a great disservice. The Bible says in Hebrews, how could you neglect and reject so great a salvation? The salvation is so great. The deliverance is so great. The assistance is so great. Why miss? And see, some of you are, you way past your deliverance. You were supposed to be delivered years ago. When the prophet came into your life, you've been playing around with your flesh, playing around with demons, and now it's hard. Yes, it is hard. It's hard for you to turn from your wicked ways. It's hard for you to stop being religious. It's hard for you to stop being traditional. It's hard for you to stop doing your form of godliness, your religious witchcraft. It's hard for you to break that sorcery in traditionalism. It's hard for you to do it. Because you've been so stubborn in unrighteousness, self-righteousness for so long. That's why when Dr. Murdoch came into my life, I wasn't going to play around with the timing. I served Dr. Mike Murdoch. I obeyed Dr. Mike Murdoch. I did what Dr. Mike Murdoch told me to do. I helped Dr. Mike Murdoch. I cleaned for Dr. Mike Murdoch. Built stuff for Dr. Mike Murdoch. Sold money into Dr. Mike Murdoch. Pushed Dr. Mike Murdoch. Everything. I'm still doing it today. This 2024, I'm on this line talking to you about him. To this day. Your man of God coming to your life. How come you not on fire like that? Your prophet coming to your life. They do greater works. Why are you not on fire for them like that? You trying to get delivered from depression, anxiety, overthinking, insecurity, suicide, homosexuality, lesbianism, weed smoking, vaping, drinking, fornicating, sexing, texting, adultery, lust, lewdness, jealousy, anger, resentment, bitterness, fear. You trying to get over all these different type of stuff. You were supposed to be further along if you would receive the prophet in the name of the prophet. You received the prophet's reward. Your life just progressed, but you're keeping the demons. When is your acceptable time for favor? It's your set time for favor. But you're not taking the graces. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 5 says a wise man will hear and increase in learning. A man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Well, I got with that, the right murder. I ain't tell him to go buy me no house. I ain't tell him to go buy me no car. I did what I was supposed to do towards him. And the life that I was supposed to live was in me doing what I did towards him. Some of you all are living way beneath your means. Because you're not doing what you're supposed to do to your prophet. You want to pray about it. It's not a praying matter. It's not a praying matter. Remember when Moses went go pray about his promised land after he had struck the rock. The Lord said, get away. With that, I don't want to hear it. It wasn't a praying matter. It was a sowing matter. Moses, you just sowed the wrong thing. The wrong thing is not carrying your promised land. So that's what you eat. If you sow obedience, the promised land is in the obedience. This is not a talking matter. 
We don't have to go back and forth. You don't have to plead with me about the promise, the blessing, the harvest. You ain't got to plead with me. Just do what I say. That's all. We have people begging God to let them be close to him. Why are you begging God to be close to him? Number one, there are six things that God hates. Huh? People that sow discord amongst brethren. He hates a proud look. Huh? Hands that shed innocent blood. Proverbs chapter six. He's telling you everything he hates. Why would somebody bring you close to them and you're doing what they hate? Your feet rush into iniquity. You have things in your heart you want to do, you just go do it. Why would the Lord have you close to him? If you don't want to do the things that he's telling you he likes. The Bible says he loveth the cheerful giver. You're not even in the space mentally to be a cheerful giver because you're too whorish. You're too wayward. The sowing anointing can only intensify when you're in your vineyard. I became a strong sower because I know my soul. There's people right now, you can't sow strong. You can't fulfill the sowing agenda of God because you don't even know how to stay put in your vineyard. And that's the only way the sun anointing intensifies. When you are where you're supposed to be. Abram is able to give a tenth of everything he has. And he had a lot. So you think ten, probably like a hundred dollars. No. He's wealthy. He's rich. He's able to give a tenth of all he has to Melchizedek. You know why? Because he's where he's supposed to be. No scattered focus. He wasn't talking about, okay, there's another king over here. I, I'll give him a portion, and then I'll come over here, give this king a portion, and then I'll give King uh, 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 Melchizedek this portion. It was only one soul. That's what a lot of people missing. That's what a lot of people missing. Abraham unlocked the blessing to be father of many nations because he had one soul, no scattered focus, and he knew when to invest all of himself and all of his pleasure. He knew when to do it, so nothing was hindered with Abraham's life. He didn't have 15 people talking about, okay, I'm going to give a tenth here, and then I'm going to give a tenth here, and I'm going to give a tenth here, and I'm going to go over here to this person, give them a tenth here, and, I, and I'm going to listen to this person. No, he knew. Melchizedek. People in the word operate with one soul. People of today operate with many souls. And they think that God going to break his law and his expectation. And say, okay, I'll let that slide. I'll bless you. I'll prosper you. I'll anoint you. I'll lift you up. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. When the prophet comes into your life, you're supposed to have been delivered from certain spirits. You're supposed to be sowing into that prophet. You're supposed to be helping that prophet. See, Makai has been forgiven much and he loveth much. Makai has taken my mercy towards him and have used my graces over these years. And in his love, if much, he has creatively found things to help me. And to solve problems in my world. This is his reaction to my appearance in his life. He's built many altars intentionally. This is, this is his response to my mercy. And the Holy Spirit works with his brain. 
He is more genius than he's ever been in the history of his life. He's become so genius that if I'm, if I'm talking, he'll transcribe everything that I'm saying at the speed of light. It's all my spirit that he's tapping into. But this is his response to my mercy. Hunger, helpfulness, holiness. And he's making money supernaturally through jobs. He has investors in his life. That are blessing him and he refused to eat the seed. You reap what you sow. 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 Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. You want the life that God has for you? He going to come to you in this life and say, okay, sow into me. Serve me. Follow me. Obey me. Submit to me. You don't do it. He not going to give it to you. He going to give your blessing to somebody else that does. That's what he going to do. God ain't going to wrestle with you. He not going to make you go against your will to do something you don't want to do. He got your replacement already on the earth. That's what a lot of people don't understand. Let me just help you out. Uh, 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 let's just clarify this. If you don't want to live the right life on the straight and narrow path, the Holy Ghost not going to abuse you or fight you into it. You already got somebody else that is in place if you choose to say no. Just understand that. Just always remember that. So, so the Holy Ghost giving you a favor. A hundred years from now, you either going to be in hell or heaven. When you in the lake of fire, you're not going to be in the lake of fire talking about, I'm glad I stood my ground. I'm glad I did it my way. You going to be burning and turning and murning. You're not going to be up there talking about, oh, I'm so glad I listened to my heart. Just remember this, because you're going to need to rewatch this broadcast a couple of days from now. Just remember, when Satan tell you, come on, let's go, you can go on and go. Go on and go. Because remember, this is for you. If you don't want it, hell, that's fine. People don't really understand the holiness of God. Yes, he loves you very much. Yes, he loves you with the everlasting love. But if you choose hell, he not going to leave his throne and make you stop choosing hell. He already did it. So just remember, when, when you... When you don't accept it, remember, this is your loss. It's not so big God's loss. Because let's just be honest. God is a creator. He can create another you in a minute. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, no, no. This is real. This is real talk. God is a creator. Are you a creator? Can you create? No, you can't. You can't create another God, but God can create another you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. No, no, you don't want to hear, but it's true. It's true. Shh. Shh. I ain't even going to hold you. But I got to say this. And see, Cindy not on my list, so I use Cindy as a, a, a as an example. She she not. 
The other day, we was coming back from playing basketball. I was with my sons. I look over. The Holy Ghost had me do this for a purpose. And, and when my sons hear this, they'll understand. I looked over. I said, is that Cindy right there? <laughs> I said, look at Cindy right there. That's Cindy. Now, I know that Cindy is not here. I know that Cindy is not right there. But when they looked over, they were stunned. The woman looked just like Cindy, had Cindy's same countenance. And guess what? When the woman looked over at me, the woman smiled. And she was Cindy's age. Same everything by Cindy. If you would have saw them, and I, I ain't take no pictures. You don't, don't want to look creepy, you know, and then give the person the wrong ideas. Like, you, like oh, oh, he liked me. They just start following me and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, the person had everything to the T. To the degree, if you would have saw them, you would have said, oh, Cindy don't move there, huh? You ain't got to lie to kick it, prophet. We know Cindy don't move there. No, it wasn't. God has many batches of who you are. If you don't choose the will of God, somebody from your batch will. This real. I, I'm not even. I'm not even trying to scare you. I'm just letting you know. I'm not even trying to scare you. I'm just letting you know. I'm not even trying to scare you. I'm just letting you know. And see, there's some of you all in this ministry right now. I know a lot of things that I have never told you. But I know where you came from. And, and I, I want to I, I solve a matter real quick. Some of you all don't really understand the law of replacement. You think the law of replacement means if this person didn't fail, then I wouldn't have a purpose. No, 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 no. The law of replacement is where God calls you to fulfill a slot that somebody failed to do. But you already had your own divine significance and assignment apart from them if they never fail. Are you hearing me? So it's just an added on mantle. When you replace somebody, it don't mean if they didn't fall. I would never have no place. No. You would have still had place with your own purpose. But God saw fit to give you their plate along with your plate. So you got a full course meal. You got a whole buffet. That's why Psalm 81 verse 10 and on said, open your mouth wide and I'll fill it. You know why? Because some of the stuff you're going to be eating is, is somebody else's destiny. My goodness. That's somebody else's riches. That's somebody else's money. That's somebody else's instruction. Somebody else's altar. They didn't want to sow. They didn't want to submit. They didn't want to serve. God said, you open up your mouth. I'll give it to you. I'll make you fat with increase, fat with blessing, fat with health, fat with wealth, fat with pleasure. See, you, you don't, I, I'm not even going to keep on, I ain't going to keep on talking to you. But remember, Nabal was, 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 um, uh, uh, had Abigail on Nabal's plate. But when Nabal didn't want to handle the plate correctly, God put the plate on David's tab. And now David is taking somebody else's. They didn't want it. We is, we is familiar with a movie called Life. 
And Eddie Murphy had some cornbread. The big old man was in there saying, you going to eat your cornbread? He said, no, no, no. And Martin wanted to give the man's cornbread. He said, no, don't give him your cornbread. He, he wanted to fight for the cornbread. He went to go fight the man. The man beat him down, took the cornbread. See, your cornbread going to end up with who really got that truth, good fight of faith in them. Even though it's your cornbread, you ain't going to eat it if you don't fight the good fight of faith. Who's fighting the good fight of faith going to get that cornbread? You might say, no, nah, this is my cornbread. You're not going to have my cornbread. But the cornbread will be given to who is fighting the good fight of faith. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 25, the man with the one talent, he dug it. God said, go take the man with the one talent, go give it to the one that had the five and the five more added on to. That man had 11 talents. He had the talent of that one man. You don't decide what happened to your destiny if you ain't going to fight for it. You don't, not going to fight for your destiny. You won't be depressed, sad. You won't be sinful, want to follow the ways of the world. That's fine. You have a twin in the earth that will take your plate. I want you to understand that. You got to understand. If you, if you don't want to do the will of God for your life, understand. God going to fight for you. He going to reason with you. He going to plead with you. He going to help you. What the Bible say, Isaiah chapter 1. Say, come reason with me. Let us reason together. See? See, the Lord won't come reason with you. He won't clean you up. He won't set you free. But when you decide you don't want it, God like, okay, fine. I'm moving on. I'm going to go pull in the replacement. They're going to fulfill it. And they're going to receive the reward for their purpose plus your purpose. The Bible says you shall receive double for your shame. Sometimes that double is because God let you carry somebody else's cross. They didn't want to carry the cross. They didn't want to lay down their life. They didn't want to die to themselves. God said, okay, you want to die to yourself? I'll give you what they was going to receive, their crowns, their blessings, their mantles, their money, their houses, their sex. We got to be honest. God will give you their sex life. They didn't want to receive it. They wanted Satan and Satan's will. God said, come here, come here. I'll give it to you. You have it. Bible say, uh, he that have will have more and more abundance. And he, he, him that doesn't have, even what he does have will be taken away. That's how God operates. He don't give to people because you think that you need it. He give it to you because you have been a faithful steward over time and obedience and sowing and the altar that he has given you. And because you was a faithful steward, he rewards you with double, with plenteousness and with abundance. I'm just letting you know. So wake up. You notice I'm talking to you about this after August 11th. We're in a new season and notice I'm giving you glory information. I'm giving you glory literature for you to succeed in this new season with no excuses so that you don't miss out on this massive move of the spirit that is on the earth right now. The Holy Ghost moving to make you rich, wealthy, restore you, bless you and give you the acceptable year of the Lord. That's what I'm coming to announce to you and I'm showing you how to operate in it. So as you look at the message, don't hear me with the ears of flesh. Hear me with the ear of wisdom. This is a chance. You don't want it, you ain't got to take it. Some of you are going to take other people's mantle in this season. You know why? Because you're going to sow the money when they don't sow the money. You're going to serve when they don't want to serve. You're going to be attentive when they ghost. You're going to be focused when they distracted. You're going to be holy while they horny. And you're going to fulfill what they didn't fulfill. That's what's going to happen. In this month of August, some of you all don't even recognize. You only got a little bit of oil in your lamp. You, you only got a little bit of oil in your lamp. Your car about to crank out. If you don't receive a fresh anointing, you're going to fall by the wayside. I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know. And there's somebody already in place to take your place.
I'm just letting you know that. 